I'm not sure if this is working. Wait, how do I know if it's recording? Hello? Is it recording? Can I just say, I'm really excited to be doing this. So, hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Yay! <laughs> Obviously this is my first one and I have no idea how to use the camera, but I'm just gonna try and see how it goes. Today I'm gonna be doing a Q&A instagram questions wait let me do that again today i'm going to be doing a q a and the questions are pulled through instagram so just want to start by saying thank you so much for submitting all your questions i had a lot like i wasn't too sure what to um do my first video on but i had a lot of people like putting some input and ideas the first question was how old are you so i'm 22 so i turned 22 in october october on the 15th that's my birthday so 22 Born in 1999, but yeah, that's it. Where are you from? I'm from Essex. I'm based in England, Essex, but um, originally, I'm actually from Zimbabwe. So I moved to the country when I was, I moved here when I was like 11, maybe 11, about to be 12. So yeah, so I wasn't born here. Hi guys, again, I'm back. So as you can see, I've changed my outfit because I noticed that there was a stain on my avatar, so I was like, you know what, I don't want to make a crappy first impression. So one thing about me, you guys are going to get to know is that my outfit is everything. Like, I always want my outfit to look 10 out of 10 all the time, and honestly, I don't even know if I've got the budget for it, but <laughs> that is literally me. So, um, quick story, like, quick little story thing that happened one time. So me and my friend were going to go out to dinner one time, and I met at the train station, and she went like to me, she was like to me, I was like, so do you like my outfit? And she goes like, um, I'm not going to lie, it's... It's not my favourite outfit, it's not the best, it's not ugly but it's not my favourite outfit. No joke, as soon as we got to Oxford Circus, the first thing I did was go into the shop and I bought a brand new outfit, a whole new outfit. So yeah, maybe I'm a little bit extra. If my outfit is not good, if I don't feel like I like my outfit, then the whole night is going to be dead. So then the whole YouTube is going to be dead if my outfit is stained and I didn't notice that. I'd have literally not posted that. But anyways, it's fine. Just a little background story on there. Back to the questions. I don't even know how to act, guys. <laughs> this is so hard. I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Okay, act natural. Act like yourself. It's not that deep. I can be shy sometimes, but I'm not actually shy. But I can be shy. But I'm not sure. Next question is, are you or where, wait, that, that, that. <laughs> the next question is, where are you originally from? So originally I was born in Zimbabwe and for those that may know, I'm actually Shona. So the other, the Shona tribe side of things. Because in Zim there's two, so there's Ndebele and there's Shona. So I'm Shona. But I can speak a little bit of Ndebele though. Because at some point I could actually speak five languages. But now I can only speak two, which is weird. And I can still understand Debella though. Question number four is, are you in a relationship? Um, no, I'm not in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I want to be in a relationship mm -hmm. at the moment. But one thing I do know is that I don't think I'm ready for a relationship in terms of being there for someone else. I generally don't know how to do that yet. Because... I don't know how to be there for myself yet. Do you know what I mean? I'm still really learning who I am and stuff like that. When was your last relationship? Uh, probably two years ago now. Almost two years ago. Um, yeah, I was with someone for like two years. And then that ended. And that relationship taught me a lot about myself. Which is the fact that like, I genuinely am not mature enough for a relationship yet. And that stuff is a lot. Not even just from my part, but from the person I was with. Like, that stuff is a lot. You need to know who you are. You need to be grown. Like, you need to actually be mature to be able to kind of handle the pressure that relationships bring. How tall are you? Question number five. I think I might be five foot four, but I might be five foot five. Yeah. So I'm between five foot four, five foot five. five, five, five. <laughs> I'm between five foot four and five foot five. Um, was it hard dropping out of uni? Because I'm in the Sims said that the I can't talk. It's embarrassing. I can't read either. Yeah, my reading is awful, so is my spellings. I'm just gonna let you guys know because it's gonna happen a lot. My reading and my uh, spellings are really bad. But funny enough, I actually have straight A's in English and so I don't know how I got through it to be fair. 
can't talk. I can't talk. I can't talk. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do that again. How old are you? And was it hard dropping out of uni because I'm in the same situation? So this is question number six. Like I said earlier, I'm 22 years old. I dropped out of uni when I was 20, actually. But funny enough, I'm back in uni again. So I'm going to just explain that a little bit more. So I actually went after my A-levels. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I didn't know what uni I wanted to go to. But you know the pressure when all your friends are leaving and you feel like you're being left behind and stuff like that. And my family kind of just encouraged me to go study nursing because, yeah, you're always going to have a job. And as soon as you leave uni, like, there's going to be a job waiting for you there. I kind of knew how the hospital was like, but I didn't actually know how the hospital is like. So I actually started going into nursing, uh, studied for seven months, then I dropped out. Was it hard? I would love to do a nice story time for you guys, because I feel like this is just questions and I might go on a waffle. Um, it was probably, to be completely transparent, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Not the dropping out of uni, but just kind of picking myself up and then finding my way after I dropped out of uni because I had no clue what I was gonna do at all. I kind of just left, I was like, you know what? This might not be for me. There's so much that I learned through that whole period. It was difficult, probably one of the most challenging things I've had to do emotionally, emotionally and mentally, which is basically the same thing. Doing it was the best thing for me. You know what I mean? You know the whole thing of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, that shit is real. But um, yeah, so now it wasn't hard, but it was very, very challenging. I don't even know how to explain it. It took a lot of strength to kind of pick myself up again and get back on my feet. What uni do you go to now? So basically, so after I left uni, I came across a degree apprenticeship. And most people don't actually know much about degree apprenticeships. They're quite new. I think the first degree apprenticeships were rolled out in 2015. So usually when people say, I'm an apprentice, we just think, oh, you're on like a three pound a wage type of thing. But no, that's not the case. Degree apprenticeships are honestly, I feel like for my passion, because personally, I love business. I've always loved business. Like from the time I was 12, I was doing business. Like I've always, always, always been making money from very young age. So I was like, what's it called? So yeah, so I always wanted to do business, but do you know there's this stigma around business degrees where you can never get a job with it because the competition is crazy and a lot of people do business. So um, what you need when you've got a business degree or like a lot of the degrees, things like law and stuff like that, is that you're going to need a lot of experience just the same way with nursing or social work. They get experience as part of their degree, but we don't. So I actually wanted to study business, but I couldn't because I knew that it would be difficult to get a job. Then I came across... Um, a degree apprenticeship which basically meant that i worked for a company monday to thursday and on fridays they paid for me to go to uni so currently i'm actually with the university of kent and i get to basically go to work and then i also get to you know do uni work on the side and personally i'm not gonna lie to you i learn a lot more at work you guys my guys it's it's deep because you be out here thinking hey you need this other working is hard okay especially when you work in a corporate environment like you literally have to grow the fuck up language again you literally have to grow up there's no your child you know you get projects that you look after you gotta report back on your kpis you gotta meet your objectives like you need to be consistently thinking i always say this like my job i love it don't get me wrong because i do love it it's helped me grow a lot but you literally have to be an adult you know, and you're working in an environment with loads of adults. Again, I don't want to go on a waffle, but I would definitely love to touch more on that so people can just know it's an option out there because I never knew it was an option and honestly, it was the best thing ever because now, hear, the, hear me out, I get three years of experience, right? I don't get no student debt because while I work as well, I also get paid like a salary and then they also pay for my uni. So I literally, I don't have to worry about no student debt. During the time I've been studying, I've been able to, um, I had my driving license before that, I've been able to save up money towards my mortgage, I've been able to buy myself a car, I've always been someone who always needs to be earning, like I'm, I love that security of knowing that I can take care of myself no matter what happens, so degree apprenticeships was a perfect match for me. Like I said, we can go and do it another time because we don't want to go crazy and just start talking bears, but I'm really enjoying this now, you know, I was really nervous before, but I get so passionate when we talk about uni and life and all of that crap. Yeah, how how do you afford your lifestyle do you work so going back to that yes i do work full-time monday to thursday um i get paid from that and then 
Instagram. So really and truly, the only reason I've been able to afford everything, like taking care of myself, buying whatever I want, saving money, traveling, whatever. Obviously, I haven't traveled that much because of Corona was because of the fact that I work while I study because if I wasn't doing and also I live at home so I haven't moved out so I don't have to pay rent and buy myself food and stuff like that so that has really helped me save and like I said my personality personality <laughs> please tell me you know that TikTok it goes like it's just my personality oh I don't remember it um my personality is that I need security like I need to know I can take care of myself and I like a certain lifestyle and I know that it's hard to maintain if you're not working or if you're not earning but obviously because God is amazing um, Instagram has been another thing that's been introduced into my life in terms of just income wise and how do you make your skin glow? <laughs> to be fair I don't know if I would say my skin glows or anything like I've definitely seen people with better skin but give me a minute, I'm gonna get you my uh, my face wash so I can show you the products that I use. Give me a minute. I'm back, so these are the products that, that I use. So I use this La Roche Posay face wash, and I'm not gonna lie to you, right? I never knew about this stuff until I went for my interview and they gave me one. They gave me like a gift bag with this. And I promise you, ever since then, I've been addicted. I love this like it's perfect for my skin it's for oily skin. I don't use a lot on my face either, like I don't have a crazy skin routine or anything like that, but La Roche Posay is one of the best things that ever happened to me. Like the best thing that's ever happened to me. I'm not even joking. Like I don't have to worry. When I don't use it, I actually get anxious. I also use this cream twice a day. So every time when I work in the morning and in the evening before I sleep, I use the this is Vichy. So I find that La Roche Posay and Vichy go really well for me. There's another cream that I usually use, but I don't know where it's gone. But this is the new one I've been using recently as well, and it works really well. But you know what? I'm gonna link them all down below anyway, so in case if anyone wants to get it, but La Roche Posay has been a blessing in my life and I love it. I love it, mate. Did you ever have uh, body insecurities and how did you overcome them? Guys, guys. <laughs> my guys. Oh, body insecurities. I feel like if you've never had body insecurities, then your character building was different. Like, you probably missed out on a little bit of growth man i feel like everyone has definitely had body insecurities and most people are probably still working through them now but honestly i did for a very 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 very, very long time like i did i remember i used to cover my legs my legs were skinny and they still are skinny but i had skinny legs i was skinny everywhere and growing up i had insecurities all right is I really didn't like my body at all. I used to cover it. I used to cover everything. I used to wear baggy clothes all the time. The first time I wore a crop top, like something that leaves my belly out, I was 15 years old. And the first time I wore leggings as well was around the same time because I used to hate seeing my skinny skinniness. But one thing I can say is that it's not that my body changed. Like, I obviously changed, like, naturally because I grew up, you know. What really helped me overcome it was confidence and just kind of no thinking i'm the shit and then being the shit do you get it like i was like i said I was, i've always been skinny and i still am skinny now but i just grew to love it i just had to love it i had no choice because if i hate me when people look at me all they're ever gonna see is that hate that i have of myself like literally when do you know when people say that saying of like beauty starts from within that shit is real it does start from within and if you don't feel beautiful and if you don't feel like your body's perfect no one's ever gonna feel like that no one's ever gonna see it so one thing that i definitely did was that i just started loving myself i was like you know what i don't care and the more i did that the more every time i look in the mirror i appreciate my body now you know and even studying instagram was one of those things was like i didn't even like this was way before instagram i had I was kind of secure my body before I started Instagram. So by the time I did start Instagram, it was so much easier for me to kind of just create content that reflected what I'm most proudest of. I found that with loving my body meant that I could express myself better in terms of like what I wore. Because before I used to limit myself a lot. I'm like, no, I'm too skinny to wear that. But now I literally love to express how I'm feeling by what I'm wearing. It's so weird. Like if I'm feeling really sad, you probably catch me in black and really covered up clothes or whatever. Or you catch me in really, you know, baggy clothes if i'm feeling sexy you know i'm catching some short short skirt you know if i'm feeling excited like i generally love to express myself through what i wear 
but um yeah no i definitely did have a lot of insecurities like growing up like just like anybody else the more you love yourself the more these things don't bother you if you know what i mean and that's just life you just have to love yourself that's how you get over any insecurity you have to love yourself forgive yourself take care of yourself you is your bestest of friends you is your biggest fan and you need to know that because once you know that you understand the power that you hold in your hands like you can literally do anything